All right, thank God for another right and divine word, word true Bible study. And we thank God for the review. Thank God for the review. <laughs> and the review. <laughs> Amen. All right, everybody's going to turn tonight to 1 Peter chapter 4. Uh, we're going to come there. Now, the Bible says in Romans chapter number 1, verses 18 and 19, it says that, For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. And so we must first understand where the most aggressive spirits against the righteousness of God are found from, from whence they emanate. Uh, and so here uh, they hold the truth in unrighteousness, because that which may be known of God is manifest in them, for God has showed it unto them. These are preachers who have people who have been informed of the righteous path, the holy ways of God. Uh, Jude writes in chapter in verse number four, said, For there are certain men who crept in unawares who were before of old ordained to this condemnation, ungodly men. Turning the grace of God of our God into lasciviousness and denying the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, and so these are spirits that come against the holy righteousness of God. Now, we must also realize that those who have swerved, swerved from uh, the righteousness of God are the quickest and most violently aggressive against those who who are determined to remain committed to God's holy standard. Uh, when you commit to not changing and going the way of the world, they become your enemies and, and seek to attack you. Uh, but understand, there's always Bible precedence for what we're seeing today. There's nothing new under the sun. And so Jesus speaks in Luke chapter 11, verse 14 through 20. Uh, and he was casting out a devil, and it was dumb, and it came to pass. When the devil was gone out, the dumb spake, and the people wondered. But some of them said, he cast out devils through Beelzebub, the chief of the devils. And others, tempting him, sought of him a sign from heaven. But he, knowing their thoughts, said unto them, Every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation, and a house divided against a house falleth. If Satan also be divided against himself, how shall his kingdom stand? Because ye say that I cast out devils through Beelzebub. And if by Beelzebub cast and if I by Beelzebub cast out devils, by whom do your sons cast them out? Therefore shall they be your judges. But if I with the finger of God cast out devils, no doubt the kingdom of God has come upon you. Uh, and so here Jesus is manifesting the, the power of God and and, and casting out the devil from a young man. And these folks got upset and want to accuse him of being the devil. Isn't that something? Uh, in another place in Luke chapter 12, verse 49 and 53, uh, Jesus made it clear that as you go about doing the righteous things, the, the righteousness committing or, or performing the righteousness of God, committing to living the righteousness of God, there will be opposition in your own home. So uh, uh, here, uh, the house divided against itself cannot stand. Uh, so you know the, 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 uh, the tactic of the devil is to divide the house, the house of God. Okay, so there will be divisions in what we call the house, not the kingdom, but we call the house of God, the assembly. Uh, now listen to what Jesus says in Luke 12, verse 40, 49 and 53. I am come to send fire on the earth, and what will I if it be already kindled? Uh, but I have a baptism baptized with, and how am I straightened till it be accomplished? Suppose ye that I am come to give peace on earth, I tell you, nay, but rather division. For from henceforth there shall be five in one house divided. Three against two and two against three. The father shall be divided against the son, the son against the father, the mother against the daughter, the daughter against the mother, the mother-in-law against her daughter-in-law, and the daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. So there will be nothing but division. And the reason they are divided, see some folks want righteousness and some folks want religion. 
Some folks want to want to go to church. Some folks want to want the church to be in them. The, they want to be a part of the of the mystical body of Christ, the body of baptized believers who have received the gift of the Holy Ghost with the all witness of speaking in tongues and the evidence of a sanctified lifestyle. This becomes offensive to people because people do not want you to stand on the righteousness of God. But you, you, you have to gird up the noise of your mind, okay? You cannot be discouraged nor dissuaded by any of these spirits. So tonight, let me, let me leave a subject tonight in this lesson. Maintaining Holy Ghost integrity. Okay, maintaining Holy Ghost integrity. When we look at the lesson text here tonight in 1 Peter chapter 4. Let me give you in verse number 1. First Peter 4 and 1. For as much then as Christ has suffered for us in the flesh, arm yourselves likewise with the same mind. For he that hath suffered in the flesh hath ceased from sin. Now, maintaining Holy Ghost integrity. You can't start feeling sorry for yourself. Christ was opposed. He suffered in the flesh. And we're instructed by Peter to arm ourselves Likewise, don't think that don't think that your journey will be any different from that of Christ. Okay, he was perfect; he was without sin, no guile found in his mouth, and yet they attacked him. So here we are with all of our faults, and whether they're uh, past or current, we have faults and things we've done, some things we, we did intentionally, some things not intentional, but they're still done. And folks can can try to bring them back up into your face and try to remind you of, oh, I remember when you were, you were not. Well, that was me in the past. Old things are passed away. All things are become new. And so you have to learn how to find solace in the Word of God. Okay? You find peace through the written Word of God. Through the written Word of God, you find peace. Because when you read the Word, when you read the Word of God, it becomes life to you. In the beginning was the word, word was with God, word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him. Without, in, without him, without him, made that was made. And him was life. And the life was the light of man. So the word is the light. Life. And the and the word is the is our light. Amen. And so we find peace. He'll keep us in perfect peace. It will keep our mind stayed on yeah. him. He's not giving us a spirit of fear, but of power, of love, and of a sound wow. mind. And so they went against Jesus in his perfectness. They're going to come against us in our imperfectness uh, because we believe what our perfect God has told us to believe. Mm -hmm. That he no longer should live the rest of his life in the flesh to the lust of men, but to the will of God. There is deliverance from all this mess. Mm -hmm. for, the time, for the time past of our life, Many suffice us to have wrought the will of the Gentiles where we walk in lasciviousness, lust, excess of wine, revelings, banquetings, and abominable idolatry. So here we did what they did. We, our former life, old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. And so for the time past for the time past of our life, it suffice us to have wrought the will of the Gentiles. When we walked, not walking, not our walking, when we walked in lasciviousness. Now, lasciviousness, uh, the Greek, it comes from the Greek word uh Asilgia, okay? And it, it's not it, it means not affecting pleasantly. Uh, or exciting disgust. Uh, so lasciviousness is unbridled lust. It is debauchery, uh, licentiousness, uh, it's wantonness, it's shamelessness. It is it is pure filth, lasciviousness, lechery. Inordinate indulgence in sexual activity, uh, 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 debauchery, seduction, uh, corruption, uh, demoralization, uh, deprivation, uh, perversion, uh, wantonness, having no regard for justice or for others' feelings, rights or safety, merciless, inhumane, 
And so when you when you we we often time or pr probably most of the time, not all the time, we go over this word lascivious, lasciviousness, and we just pass over it. This term is used in the Bible to denote a very, very intensive place of sin. To uh, it, it describes a people, a spirit that does all it can to be the furthest thing away from the righteousness of God. And so, uh, again, the Greek word literally means not affecting pleasantly. And, and think about this definition, excitingly, exciting, uh, ex exciting disgust, exciting disgust, exciting disgust, exciting disgust. It's exciting to have such sin, to, to engage in such filth. Now, this is in the church. So you have these spirits in the church who are so addicted to sin, they enjoy it. See, when the sinner comes into the presence of God and comes under conviction, he wants to be separated from his sin. Folks come and in the church and become a, 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 a drunken on church, but they never develop a, an appetite, uh, a lusting for, a hunger for, for godliness. And so they become, you know, the, the church activities placate their need and they're fine. Uh, but they never, ever get to the place where God is pleased because there's always lasciviousness in the house. That is why in the churches there's so much sin practice. That's why folks can have all of these secular activities going on in the church. That's because of lasciviousness. This is not because of lasciviousness, but this is, this is, these are examples of lasciviousness. That's why they can parade and praise dancers in the church and shaking their bodies and showing their bodies and showing their flesh and their, and their forms and their bodies and all that because that's an example of lasciviousness. Lasciviousness, having, we're going to do gospel rap, you come in looking like a hood, a thug. You got your pants down around your knees and all kinds of tattoos and, 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 and body piercings and, and saying all kinds of foolish things. And everything is the same things in the world or in the church. These are forms of lasciviousness. Now understand, because they become drunken on these things. They become so drunk until if you say something against it, they call you the devil. That's how drunk they become, become on these evil things. Everything that's ungodly, when you call it ungodly, they say you're ungodly because you call what's ungodly, ungodly. So you've got to understand, you've got to identify these spirits, but you can't be all worked up about them. Remember now, that Jesus was crucified, and he was perfect. They came against Jesus, and he was perfect. He didn't trip. He could have come out of the cross. He could have destroyed everybody. He could have called tens of tens of ten, uh, uh, ten, ten thousand leagues of angels to come to his rescue. No such thing. So we don't have a right to become all messed up in the head because someone doesn't like us. Because we, we are committed to standing on the holiness of God. So we've got to understand this, uh, uh, the, the, the spirit of lasciviousness in the church. Uh, and that's why you see so much sin practiced in the churches. It, it's so intense until you have folks who say they're saved and sanctified. We show up old school holiness and they all they do is practice sin. Yeah. You're not old school holiness because you don't because the women don't wear pants. You don't wear pants, but you're a whore. You're not old school holiness. You're a whore. All right. We don't wear makeup. We don't wear jewelry. Oh, well, it goes so far. We don't go here. Don't go. It goes so far beyond that. If you are because because lasciviousness is lewd sexual behavior, and and and, and the, the, the the root cause the root cause of this is is inordinate affection, inordinate uh, 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 sexual behaviors, and People in church become so preoccupied with sex, and not just heterosex, heterosexual sex, but homosexual sex. See, the spirit is strong, and so it has men turning to men, and women turning to women, and men needing multiple women, and women needing multiple men, and doing any and everything. You've got the preacher sleeping with the women. Uh, and sleeping with each other. Why? Because of this is lasciviousness in the church. This spirit is destroying many people in the church. And this is how powerful it is. 
When you come through the doors and you don't know any better, then you become a victim of those spirits. And so you have folks who come to church who come to church to see Christ and get to church and are deceived by the preacher, deceived by somebody in the church. That's why we have all little boys and girls being molested in the church. We have all these homosexuals molesting the little boys. Why? Because this is lasciviousness being practiced in the church. There is a sexual addiction. There's a sex demon in the church. A sex demon. And it does and not just the act of intercourse, but the act of wanting to dress sexy. That's why folks say they're saved. They want to dress sexy. That is lasciviousness. There is no modesty in lasciviousness. So that's why the women are drunken on wearing pants and want to slap you when you when you don't agree that they should. When you in fact when you call what it is a sin and they want to fight you and beat you up and so forth. So you know in the spirit of the Holy Ghost. Uh, when that's why they want to wear their their short shorts and all this kind of stuff. And they even wear them in church. That's why the men want to wear these tight clothes and trying to show their bodies all this sex in the church, lasciviousness in the house of God. It is the abomination of desolation. And God not only sees, but God is doing something about it. So for the, for the time past of our life may suffice us to have brought the will of the Gentiles. When we, were, when we walked in lasciviousness, lusts, out of control, always, always wanting. If your eyes can't, if your eyes can't stop looking. Man, sometimes I sit in church and I look at men, look at preachers sitting on the roster. A woman goes by like they're raping them as they go by. Yeah, women do it too. Women do it too. Yeah, in the church. We can't even come to church and honor God. We come to church trying, trying to, and I'm talking about folks who say this, hey, come to church trying to commit sin. Trying to get up with old sis at the church. You got a wife at home, you're trying to get up with her. She got, you got a husband at home, you're trying to get up with him or with her too. Have you have do it today? Uh, when we walked in lasciviousness, lusts, excess of wine. And, and now we're going back to that. Now folks ain't no sin to drink. They drink, they sit around, have social activity. Say they're saved. They sit down, sit around, and drink all the alcohol they wish to drink and still call themselves saved. Lord have mercy. But the Bible prophesied this. Revelings, revelings, wild parties, uh, wild celebrations. We have it in the church. Folks go nuts. Got whistles blowing, people whistling, uh, all kinds of throwing hankies and everything, and jumping around, acting a fool in God's house. All kinds of ri ridiculousness taking place in the house of God. Revelings, banquetings, and and, and you know it's it's we we have these. A, a banquet is a ceremonial dinner. Okay, and the whole the whole purpose of these is not to feed the hungry. The whole purpose of these is to make us money. See, and so we have these things. We put them on, and folks go and they gonna charge you a hundred dollars for a ticket to a banquet, and they got a three dollar meal <laughs> that they serve you. Lord have mercy. Uh, uh, abominable idolatries. Now, abominable uh, idolatries. Uh, these, these are, uh, this it, it's detestable worship of people and things other than Jesus. Man, they go so far overboard. And, and understand, because I, I've seen folks in, in our churches, apostolic church, who once, when the women once said they didn't wear makeup. You see them now? They got more makeup, makeup on than, than Mimi used to be on uh, uh, that show, uh, uh, um, Y'all know what I'm talking about. Funny guy on TV. They wear more makeup than she does. You went from wearing no makeup and you said it was sin. And now you like Bozo the Clown. The Drew Perry, Drew, Drew, Drew Carey show. Mimi, the woman when he's on there with all that paint on her face. They come to church looking like that. You see them, you see them out, they look, look a, a, a fair mess. Uh, 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 but they used to not wear it at all. They're going to prove to you. These, 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 they're going to prove to you that they're not wrong. So these are abominable, abominable idolatries where now their bodies become their idol. They worship how they look. This idolatry is so far-reaching, y'all. We become, we become idolatrous of ourselves. We become idolatrous of praise. 
We want to be praised. We want folks to admire us. And so you paint yourself. Oh, you went from not wearing it. You went from not cutting your hair. Now you wear it. Now you cut your hair. You put all kinds of colors in your hair, all kinds of cuts in your hair. And you call yourself a woman of God. And get up and say, I'm still saved. But you know there ain't nothing Holy Ghost about that. Understand? But this this is the spirit. A, a domnable, a, 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 abominable idolatries in the church and, and all kinds of things that we do uh, uh, when we worship the man uh, this is detestable we, we have a worship experience going on we'll stop worship to Jesus to let the bishop, the pastor, the prophet the apostle, whoever to receive them into the service, we're worshiping Jesus but when the man wants to come into the service we stop worshiping Jesus to receive a man and we call that honor, that's not honor, that's dishonor is dishonoring God. I wouldn't dare allow anyone to stop worshiping Jesus to receive me. Wouldn't do not here at your cornerstone. Wouldn't dare allow that to happen. We serve Jesus. But you see the church, this this is detestable. Worship going on. The, the, the pastor comes out, everybody stop and start standing because the pastor's coming out. The pastor ought to have been out on time with everybody else sitting out here in the service. You understand me? But stopping God's prayer, there's nothing wrong with honoring the, the leadership. But how can you stop God's worship? You're worshiping. And you'll stop worshiping to receive a man. You'll stop worshiping. This is detestable idolatry. Abominable idolatry. It's, 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 it's a, an abomination in the sight of God. And so these things ought not be in the church, but they certainly are today. Uh huh. Verse what? 4. Wherein they think it strange that ye run not with them to the same excess of riot. Speaking evil of you. Now, if you don't change and do what they do, if you don't swerve, they say they say there's something wrong with you. So if you don't run in the same excess of riot, if you don't do what they do, riot is disorderly behavior, disorder in the house of God. We become out of control. There is no order. There is a disturbance of the peace of God in his own house. And when you don't go along with it, you become their enemy. But you can't become upset because the Bible tells us, for as much as Christ has suffered for us in the flesh, arm yourself likewise with the same mind. For you that have suffered in the flesh that cease from sin. So you can't be all upset. You've got to arm yourself. You've just got to be comfortable with the fact that you know what? They're going to come against you. But don't let them shake your faith in God. Don't let them move you from the holy place. Don't you get frustrated. Don't you get confused. Don't let them take your mind and have you worried about what they say. I could care less who criticizes when I stand on the truth of God. And you better not care less neither. Nobody care about that mess or they disagree. Saints don't do worldly things. If you do worldly things, you are of the world. We are not of the world. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Verse number five. Who shall give account to him that is ready to judge the quick and the dead? For, for, for this cause was the gospel preached also to them that are dead, that they might be judged according to men in the flesh, but live according to God in the spirit. So it doesn't matter how you, how you judge how it is. See, you judge my flesh. Now understand, you're judging my flesh, but you're walking in the flesh. So he who is walking in the flesh, judging my flesh, is of no consequence to my soul. So what I'm concerned with is that we live according to God in the spirit, so therefore we are judged by God. Now, it's great to be judged of men when you walk in righteousness, because even when they criticize your righteousness, it's still invalid. See, it doesn't validate it because it criticized you. We don't do what they do. We are holy people. And we are apostolic. We are of the apostles' yes. doctrine. We follow the apostles' doctrine. Yes. When you follow the apostles' doctrine, you live in modesty. That's how you live. You dress modestly. Everything that you do is modest. Where we practice temperance. We're temperate in all things. It's so all this mess now. They say they're apostolic and they're wearing pants and shorts and makeup and jewelry and all this mess. They're not apostolic. They're religious people, but they are not apostolic. And all those who've swerved, who've changed, all those who've gone 
back to what they said they came out of. Well, if I do those things which I must destroy, I make myself a transgressor. So they are all transgressors. And some of them uh, uh, actively recruit others to go their errant way. Now they are also workers of iniquity. So these pastors who, who lead people astray, they are workers of iniquity, the most egregious sinners in this Bible, and God will deal with them. What verse are we at? Verse 6. Come verse on, For this cause was the gospel preached also to them that are dead, that they might be judged according to men in the flesh, but live according to God in the Spirit. Seven. But the end of all things is at hand. Be ye therefore sober and watch unto prayer. Now listen, it all comes to an end. But you've got to be sober. Don't, don't, don't be caught up in what they're doing. Not only, not only should you not do what they do, but don't, don't be discouraged because they criticize what you do or what you don't do. Amen. Okay? You just do what God says. Be ye holy, for I am holy. We practice the holiness of God. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercy of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable for the will of God. If it's God's will for a woman to walk around with shorts on, with pants on, showing her hind parts, showing her shape, with her boobs hanging out, if it's God's will for her to walk around with a bunch of makeup on her face and, and piercings and everything, if it's God's will for a man to walk around with the long hair, got all these dreads and stuff in his head, head if, if, if that's God's will for me to look like a pimp, to look like a player, if that's God's will, well, you better, you better shut your mouth. Because now you're lying on God. Don't you lie on this to misidentify God because you'll get in a whole heap of trouble. So, but the end of all things is at hand. Be ye therefore sober and watch unto prayer. Why do you watch? You watch because you don't want to become as they are. Do not become that you criticize. Do not become that you condemn. We condemn sin. If you condemn sin, don't you become a sinner. Understand? Now you can't condemn sin and folks, when folks disagree with you, you get upset with them. Now you sin. Now you're mad. Now you walk around all messed up. No, you're sinning. I walk comfortably and confidently in God, in His Holy Word. And I make sure that I, I stay in the Word, and you should too. Stay in the Word of God so that your lifestyle lines up with the Word of God. Regardless of what they say, how they feel, how they reject you, don't want to fool with you, call you all kinds of names, call yourself right, holy than now, judgmental, uh, legalistic, all that kind of stuff. Just give God thanks for the name call. Ain't that wonderful to be called names for the name, for the, for the sake of Jesus? Okay, verse 8. And above all things, have fervent charity among yourselves, for charity shall cover the multitude of sins. Understand, you got to have charity amongst ourselves. We, that's what we have to do. You gotta have love amongst ourselves. See? Because one thing about it, and, and you know, we always want to love everybody. No, the saints out we do good to all men, especially those who have a household of, of faith. You gotta you gotta have love for and do good to those who are the household of faith, right? Because we encourage one another. See, when you have the, the dog fight out there, when you come in God's house, you gotta be able to encourage one another. When you need one another during the day, you got to be able to call the saints and count the saints and receive encouragement in the Holy Ghost. Can't be complaining to each other about what I've been doing. You've been doing. No, I got time for complaining. No, in everything, give thanks. Men are always praying, not faint, right? So we pray. We don't faint. In, in everything, we give thanks. Understand? So we won't have time for that mess. So in all, above all things, have fervent charity among yourselves, for charity shall cover the multitude of sins. Charity, the love of God, covers all this mess. Verse number nine. Use hospitality one to another without grudging. That says tough, self explanatory. Go on. As every man hath received the gift, even so minister the same one to another, as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. Taking care of each other. As good stewards of the manifold grace of God, God's unmerited favor, we have to make sure that we cherish His grace. He's extended to us, and we don't take it for granted. We don't take His grace lightly. And you know what the grace of God means? Is that we have to love everybody, regardless of how they don't like you, how they may hate you. You still have to love them. I take a fool with them, but you love. You have to love everybody. You can't carry uh, uh, stuff. You can't carry hate in your heart. You can't do that against anyone for any reason. 
I don't care what they've done to you. You won't be saved. You can't hate. If you hate, you're not saved. No. That's why that's why when I see pastors who who they rejoice because people left their church. Something wrong with their Holy Ghost. I don't care who's left the church. I don't care how much of a headache they were. I don't want to see anybody leave. The longer they stay, then the more the better chance they have of getting right with God. Because you've given them the word of God. What better than receiving the word of God? So how dare I rejoice when someone leaves the church? It's ugly when a preacher, when a pastor says, that's right, God sent them out. God got rid of them. Shame on us. All souls belong to God. No, they're not mine. My job is to preach the word, be instant, in season, out of season, prove, rebuke, exhort with all on suffering and doctrine. My job is to cry out of the spirit and lift up my voice like a trumpet. My job is going to all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. My job with all nations baptized in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. That's my job. Not to run them off because they're not doing what I want them to do. Preach the word. If the word doesn't run them off, I better not run them off. Understand? So I can't hate you because you're not doing right and mistreat you. I'm still going to the word and I'm going to discipline you. Now, if you think discipline means I don't hate I, I hate you, that's another issue. I, I can't, nothing I can do about that. But yeah, we're going we're gonna to discipline, reprove, rebuke. We're going to do that. Exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. We're going to do that. But how can I be a man of God and you leave and I'm, I'm glad that devil gone? Isn't that terrible? I'm glad, I'm glad she gone. No good heifer. Isn't that terrible? It wasn't no good anyway. And we're, we're rejoicing because somebody left the church. No, that's not the spirit of the Holy Ghost. All right, where are we? Verse 11. Uh-huh. If any man speak, let him speak as the oracles of God. If any man minister, let him do it as of the ability which God giveth, that God in all things may be glorified through Jesus Christ, to whom be praise and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Now, if God's not speaking, shut your mouth. Too many people saying God said, God didn't say. It's talking things that they feel in their flesh. Inconsistent with the word of God. Too many things are said in the church or said by church people that contradict the written word of God. The best thing you can do is study to be quiet. Stop talking so much. Stop getting up trying to instruct folks and you always got something to say about nothing, but you don't know anything. If you don't know anything, what can you say? There's nothing for you to say. So, so many things in the church are said, but they're not said to glorify God. They're said, said to glorify ourselves. Now, understand, because that's why you got this spirit of, of prophecy in the church, trying to glorify themselves. So the spirit, when, 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 God, when God gives you the gift, he uses the gifts through you whenever the gift is necessary to be used. You don't pick and choose when to use the gift. God gives, he, God chooses. And when God needs to use you, when he needs someone to, to, uh, to use the gift and, and you are a clean, holy vessel, then you're available for God to use you with the gift. Understand? You got folks trying to, trying to force the gift. Oh, I got the gift of prophecy. I can say the prophet. No, no, no. Because that's not the same as the prophet. The prophet, and there aren't very many, let me tell you that right now. The prophet has authority to speak and it comes to pass. The prophet doesn't tell you what God told me to tell you. No, that's prophecy. The prophet can, can speak it and because God has, has ordained his office, it comes to pass. And God also reveals to him. But he's, a, he's one who walks in relationship with God where he's able to speak things and read the Bible and they come to pass. Then we have the gift of prophecy in the church. But you can you don't work you don't work your gift. <laughs> that's that's that that's that's bad teaching in the church. You gotta work your gift. You don't work your gift because it's not your gift. They're all God's gifts. He gave to the church. He gave gifts unto men, not for our benefit, not not for our uh, uh, egos, not to make us look good, not to make us uh, appear to be good. But He gave them to us for for for, for our lifestyles. To be consistent with his word. And so when they're not consistent with the word of God and with the instruction of God. And what, what God does is God gives us holy instruction through his written word. Okay? And so if the if the the instruction, if the, the behaviors are not consistent with the instruction God gives through his word, then they are not godly. As every man hath received 
Uh, the, what we did, we did uh, verse number. We stopped at verse 11. Okay. As every man perceived the gift, even so minister the same one to another as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. Now, you have received the gift, the gift of grace, which is the Holy Ghost. Okay. Now, in today's church, people are trying to, to walk in gifts, but they're not walking in the gift. You can't walk in the gifts if you're not walking in the Holy Ghost. So the first requirement is the gift of the Holy Ghost. Now, here's the misteaching in the church. The gifts and calling of God are without repentance. Has nothing to do with gifts of the Spirit. Has everything to do with the gift that God, God called Israel and gifted Israel. And God does not repent of his gifting of her calling of Israel. And so that the Gentiles have nothing to do with that. It's as simple as this. Gentiles cannot be arrogant because the Jews rejected God. And we are in the fold. We can't be arrogant. We can't look down on the Jews because they rejected Jesus. No. Because the gifts and calling of God are without repentance. They're still God's people. They're, they are his bride. His, uh, his wife. Okay. And so we can't look down on Israel. Because they rejected Jesus. They crucified him, right? Would you believe that alone? The gifts of calling God are better. God did. He doesn't repent of his calling or gifting of Israel. Does have has nothing to do with the gifts of the Spirit in the church. So when people say, well, the gifts of calling God are repent, that's why folks can live like that and still be gifted. No, that's not a gift. That's not a gift. Uh, uh, Simon the sorcerer, he had he bewitched he, he had uh, bewitched the people, right? And he had some great powers. And the people thought he was, he was a power from God. But he wasn't from God, was he? Okay, but they thought he was because they were watching what he did, right? The damsel in, in Acts chapter 16 with the, with the spirit of divination, because she, because she could uh, uh, tell fortunes, she was a fortune teller, and they thought, ooh, with all that she could do this, I'll tell you, she was some powerful spirit. But guess what? That wasn't God, was it? But people still followed her, and, they, and she made her, her masters great gains. She made good money. Ooh, that sounds like the church. Made good money, all this stuff. So, in the church, you have these spirits still operating in the church. You have spirits. You have, you have witchcraft operating. You have wizards and witches and warlocks in the church. And they call on the name of Jesus audibly in the church. But their lifestyles are unholy. Now, think about this. If God will not dwell in an unclean temple, then how can God work through you unclean self? So you don't possess the gift of anything other than the gift of nasty, the gift of sin. And that's a, that's a curse. And, but, but but because we don't understand the word of God, uh, we get we get bogged down because we're more excited about church than we are about God. Ooh, the gift. So how are you going to walk in a gift? And, and 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 again, you can't you can't use a gift. Somebody tell you, usually you can't use a gift. You can't use a gift. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. The gift operates through you when you start using. That's why that's why when preachers today, every time they finish preaching, they got to call a prayer line, a, a, a prophecy line. And start walking the floor, props on everybody, trying to use a gift. If you're trying to use a gift, it's not your gift. What you're using. We move under the unction of the Holy Ghost. So go back to verse number 11. Uh, uh, if any man speak, let him speak as the oracles of God. If any man minister, let him do it as of the ability which God given, that God in all things may be glorified through Jesus Christ, to whom be praised and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Now, if I say to you, sis, did I tell you? It came to pass. Who's being glorified? What did I tell you? Did not tell you? Did not call? It, who's, who's being glorified? There's no, there's no God in this. When, when God's glorified, when Jesus healed, Jesus healed, and he said, tell no man. When the apostles healed, when they worked miracles, they said, tell no man. When, when, when was it Paul and Silas, when they when people wanted to worship them, called one Jupiter, one, one, uh, 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 uh y'all help me out. One Zeus and one Jupiter, I think it was anyway. They wanted to worship them, right? And they said, oh, no, 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 get up, get up. We're men like you. In today's church, men want to be worshipped. We, won't, we won't, don't want to come in out into the service until everybody's in and in, in, in the stuff is high so we can walk in and have make grand interest. You think that's God? You think it's God for me to sit in my office and wait for y'all to, to folks start going then for me to come out the door so everybody can stop and receive me? <laughs> So, to whom, uh, 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 if any man speak, let him speak as oracles of God. If any man minister, let him do it as of the ability which God given. That God in all things may be glorified through Jesus Christ. So whom be praised, and, uh, to whom be praised in dominion forever and ever. Amen. Now these things are unpopular because, because understand, the Bible talks about will worship. Will worship means that you deliberately 
submit to worshiping something or someone. Okay? And what we do is we submit our will. Let me give you an example. When a man meets a woman, a woman meets a man, and they fall in love, you submit yourself to that person. You submit yourself to them. Some of us, we've submitted ourselves to folks in the past and what you slap ourselves about five times for submitting ourselves to them. But you willfully submitted yourself to them. Ooh, I love him. I love her. Oh, I can't stop thinking about it. You, you have submitted yourself to them. Now, you submitted yourself to more than one person because you've fallen in love, quote unquote, love with more than one person. You were in love with him, then with him. You were in love with her, then with her. You know, so you have more than one person who you had, who you had the goo jubies for uh, because you submitted yourself. Understand? But then, at some point, you would do yourself. Now, the reason you know you could have controlled yourself because just as you submitted yourself, you would do yourself. So you, you, if you could withdraw yourself from me, then you, could, you didn't have to submit yourself to me. When people come to church, they choose to submit to the leadership. That's what you choose to do. Unsaved. That's what you choose to do. But in submitting to the leadership, the holy leadership, then you are walking in obedience and now you're able to receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Now you are compelled to walk in obedience. You follow me? So now it's no longer a choice because you have the Holy Ghost. But prior to the Holy Ghost, it is an, it is an issue of choice. Even when you're saved, let me tell you all, when you're saved, when people say stuff like, well, I'm going, you got to go to the church where, where I feel most comfortable. No, if you go to church where you feel most comfortable, you're in the wrong place. <laughs> Folks look to be, feel comfortable in church. You understand? They look, they want to go somewhere and feel just as comfortable. I can just do what I want to do, say what I want I, mm -mm, no, no, that's the wrong place. Complacency is awfully dangerous. What you need to always be is challenged. If you're not being challenged spiritually, something wrong. You got to go home sometimes mad. Want to slap your pastor. Want to knock him aside his head. Want to be mad at him. Couldn't stand him. Get on my last nerve. Right, right. Every time you leave, you just happy. <laughs> uh -uh, uh -uh. No, 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 no. And there's no way in the world you're working out every day and you go home every day and you're comfortable. Work it out, you're going to feel the pain. See? Because none of us perfect, right? So you're going to go and get, and get catch the beat down. God's going to give you the beat down if, if it's God speaking. There's no way God's speaking and He's never finding you where you are. And you're Because and, if He's finding you where you are and you're in sin and you're comfortable, well, we got some problem. There's no way you can be saved and be comfortable in sin. That's right. We got us a problem. That's right. So, so, so when, when we say crazy stuff like, well, I'm looking, for, I'm looking for the church where I can go and be comfortable. Well, you're not looking for Jesus. You're looking for a social gathering. It's a social thing. You want to go to a, a social club and with, 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 with some religious uh, uh, overtones and, uh, 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 and you're good with that. That's what I want to do. But when you are seeking Jesus, he lands you on a place that you never thought you'd be. Man, I never thought I right. Because when you hunger and thirst at the righteousness, God promised to fill you. Amen. But when you hunger and thirst at the church, well, you can do that anytime. You can do that at home. You ain't got, you ain't got to go nowhere to do that. You can do that all by yourself. All right? So, for any man speak, let him speak as the oracles of God. If any man minister, let him do it as the ability which God giveth, that God in all things may be glorified through Jesus Christ, to whom be praise and dominion forever and ever. Amen. So the bottom line is all that we do is Jesus to be glorified. Uh, 1 Peter 4 and 12. Beloved. Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial which is to try you as though some strange thing happened unto you. Now here, here's the thing. You know, again, too many folks in church are angry. Too many folks in church, man, they talked about me. When you start talking about church hurt, you ain't got no Holy Ghost. No way you got the Holy Ghost to my church hurt. No, no, no. I, I don't do church hurt. I'm in, I'm in Jesus. My high, my life is, is hid with Christ in God. You can't hurt me. No church hurt. No. You start suffering church hurt, you're not coming for Jesus. You're going to look for a church. And you're looking for a social club. So your friends at your social, social club hurt your feelings. Well, they hurt your feelings at work, but you go back. <laughs> Why well, does it come to church? Everybody go crazy. But, but, but read it again. Beloved, beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial which is to try you as though some strange thing happened unto you. When you work for Christ, when you work for him, when you live holy, you're going to be criticized. 
When you are holy, you won't have many friends. Because the world loves it. So you won't have many friends. Understand? No. Woe to the man that everyone speak well of. See? Now I have many folks who like you when you when you are stuck on holiness. When you're stuck on holiness, folks talk about you like a dog. And they talk behind your back. Understand? But you gotta know that. But you can't be phased by that. You can't get mad because they talk about you. Sometimes you hear what they say. But you can't get mad at them. You can't uh -uh, you can't get mad. Gotta love talk. Thank God they talk about me. I'm so happy they talk about me. I'm tickled pink. I'm serious. I love I love being talked about. I love folks to talk about me. It makes me feel good. When I got the devil talking about me. Because if you were if you were godly, you would be criticized holiness. And you know, I don't I don't know a person in this world who's too saved, who's too holy. They think they so saved. Well, all of my righteousnesses are as filthy rags. Understand? So when 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 they come and criticize you, don't think it's strange. Don't think it. Don't 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 trip. Don't trip. Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial which is to try you as though some strange thing happened to you. Uh huh. But rejoice. Whoa, so do what? Rejoice. 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 All right, go ahead. Inasmuch as ye are partakers of Christ's sufferings, that when his glory shall be revealed, ye may be glad also with exceeding joy. Now here's our problem we don't remember to rejoice. We must rejoice. Don't get upset. Don't get mad. When the enemy comes against you, you can't get mad. Well, you ain't got a mind. No, no, rejoice. Plain and simple. You must rejoice. Rejoice when you're, when, when you're criticized because of holiness. I'm going to stand on this whether you like me or not. I'm not mad at you. I, I, don't, I don't have an attitude with you. I don't have an attitude with you. I won't run from you. I won't reject you. No, I'm not bothered by your criticisms of me. I'm rejoicing. But rejoice in as much as you are partakers of Christ's sufferings. That when his glory shall be revealed, you may be glad also with exceeding joy. Not just rejoice, but with exceeding joy. Be You understand? With exceeding joy. Rejoice. Be glad also with exceeding joy. Why? Because they're coming against you. Because they because they don't like the God in you. So when they don't like the God in you, you ought to be exceeding joyful. You ought to be happy that they don't like the God that's in you. If ye be reproached for the name of Christ, happy are ye. If ye be reproached for the name of Christ, Happy are ye, for the spirit of glory and of God rests upon you. On their part, he is evil spoken of, but on your part, he is glorified. So what don't like what you're going to trip about. I'm doing Jesus. Well, you just too sacred for hallelujah, glory to God. Look at you, plain Jane. Ain't that wonderful, I'm plain Jane? <laughs> Not Jezebel. <laughs> Isn't that wonderful? Isn't it wonderful to be called corny and boring? Isn't that great? You don't have any fun. Oh, Lord, I thank you for no fun. Ain't that wonderful? Rejoice. If you, if you be reproached for the name of Christ, happy are ye. For the spirit of glory and of God rests upon you. On their part, he is evil spoken of, but on your part, he is glorified. Now, the evil, they, they, he's evil spoken of on their part because they want to take his name and then apply all worldliness to his name. See, that's evil. See, we're holy. If you say you're holy, but you live unholy, but you still profess to be holy, then you are misrepresenting Christ. But you're going to pay for that. you know. But I'm not going to make you pay for it because I'm not God. You can't make me pay for it because you're not God. But God will make all of us pay for it. All the deeds done in this flesh, guess what? We're going to pay for them. So when we practice ungodly behaviors, we're going to pay for our ungodly lifestyles. None of your business. None of your business. You just do Jesus. That's all. When they come against you, you got to love them anyway. And so you got to leave them alone. Come here from among them and be separate. You got to put difference. You can't. You you can't like have no fellowship with darkness. We can't. We're not going to be hanging out. We're not going to be buddies hanging out. But I don't hate you. I'm not, and I don't run from you. Because if you want to hear some of this truth, come on over here to the stone. Right. You get a whole bunch of it. You got nothing but truth. But just buy the truth. That's all. That's all. Just committed to the righteousness of God. No interest in, in worldly activities. Don't want to do the worldly things. Don't want to do secular things. 
don't want to do anything of the world. We're so happy doing Jesus and allowing Jesus to do us. See? So when the, when the gifts work in the house, we don't work the gifts. The gifts work in the house. And whoever is a, a clean vessel available who God chooses to work through, guess what? He works through that vessel. Isn't that wonderful? Amen. So we don't try to work anything. We let Jesus do the work. We just obey what he says. Verse 15. But let none of you suffer as a murderer, or as a thief, or as an evildoer, or as a busybody in other men's matters. Now, you talked about because you're a murderer, or you're a thief, or you're a busybody, or you're, you're in other men's matters, you're not suffering for Christ's sake. Folks are messy in church, then they reap what they sow, and they'll start talking about their suffering. You're not suffering, you're reaping. Suffer for Christ's sake, I didn't do anything wrong. I got up and told the truth. I got up and testified about holiness, and you got mad. Suffer for Christ's sake. Don't take all that. I think she, she thinks she's so saved because she's talking about she loves, she doesn't commit a, a fornication. And she's a young saved woman and she, and she ain't sleeping around. She lying because everybody doing it. See, you don't get mad. You got to say, I know, I ain't going. Hey, whoa, 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 whoa. When they start putting everybody doing it and you know you're not doing it, don't you worry about it. I don't care about being stereotyped. I'm not what I'm not. And I am what I am. Why am I mad? You can't make me mad about that. Well, y'all saying you act style, but hey, that's fine with me. You call me what you want. I'm going to do Jesus. Now, when you take this Bible and show me where I'm sending it in this Bible, we're good. You come at me with your opinions, then you can still, you, I'm not going to listen to you, but you can talk all you want. Talk that food. Understand me? This is, this is, y'all. We must maintain our Holy Ghost integrity because the world is watching. Now, hypocrites in church could care less because all they want to do is church. But there are people, and some, and some are in church, who want the truth of God, and they're watching. You can't, you can't come down off the wall. You've got to keep living holy. You've got to keep talking. You've got to keep, keep walking holy. You've got to stay in that holy place because somebody's desperate for a change. Somebody's desperate for a, a, a change, a godly change in their lives. And, and there has to be a Holy Ghost example in their physical view. They have to look at you and talk about you. And folks will talk about you and dog you, but they admire you so much. And when you don't change and they try to wear you out and they don't, and they see that it never got you mad, and it never got you out of sorts, then they come under conviction. And they want to know, how can you can I get some of that? But when you become angry, when you want to fight them, you want to slap them because they're talking about you. Because where you don't go, what you don't wear, what you don't do, all this stuff. Now you get mad. Now you don't, you've lost them. Why you, are you secure in what you believe? When you secure in what you believe, you don't, you don't lose your mind when people, folk, folks go against you. I know what the word says. I'm obedient to God. Yeah. And if I do the wrong thing, I know what the word says. I know how to get right with God. And if it's with the person, I get right with them. Because I know what the word says. But if you accuse me or, or you criticize me, whatever, but if you say something that's, that I know is inconsistent with truth, why am I getting upset with you? There's a reason we get upset with you. See? Because we walk in Holy Ghost integrity. So when we walk in or maintain Holy Ghost integrity, the world's going to see Christ in us and somebody's going to be one to Christ. But let none of you suffer as a murderer or as a thief or as an evildoer or as a busy, busybody in other men's matters. Mm hmm. Yet if any man suffer as a Christian, uh -huh. let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God on his behalf. Now this is the only instance where, where uh, one of the writers uses the term Christian himself to identify the people of God. Uh, just so you know, we were first called Christians at Antioch. If any man suffers as a Christian, if you're like Christ and you're suffering as a result of being like Christ... Let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God on his behalf. Man, I'm so happy that you two say, Woo! Lord, I think. I know all the righteous are filthy rags, but, but, but that's in the eyes of God. But in the eyes of man, not so much. So in the eyes of man, they say, I'm too saved because I don't do what they do. Because I won't wear what they wear. I won't say what they say. I won't go where they go. I'm too saved. God, I thank you. Both hands lifted up. And hallelujah. I thank God that I'm too saved for you. Isn't that all right? But I know I'm not too saved for God. Because he's saved. And every bit, of, every bit, every ounce of Holy Ghost he puts in me, I'm going to walk in it. In the righteousness of God. Ain't that wonderful? Uh, 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 verse 17. For the time has come uh -huh. that judgment must begin in the house of God. And if it first begin at us, 
What shall the end be of them that obey not the gospel of God? No, judgment. The ju judgment begins at the house of God. It's here. Okay, at the house of God. This is where judgment begins. And God's judging the church. Whether folks want to believe it or not, there are things that are happening in the church. I'm not talking about the second world. In the church world, not the world, not the world at large. In the church world, in what people call Christendom, there are things happening. They are, they were God's killing folks, taking them out of the way because they are, they have led too many folks astray. God's revealing things in the church. Yeah, He's revealing uh, 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 lying preachers commit suicide and and all these. Sins while they're saved, saying they're saved. He's committed, he's revealing this stuff. See? See, contrary to what people say, when you commit a sin before you were saved, all that sin was forgiven. You understand? But when you say you're saved and you still practice sin, God's gonna get you. I didn't say because you made a mistake. Some folks make a mistake and they get right with God. I'm talking about you practice sinful lifestyles. God's, God sees this stuff. And there are a lot of sinful lifestyles practiced in the church. All right? So let me go on record tonight as saying this, okay? When you see grown men in the church, late 20s, 30s, and 40s, and they never had a wife, something wrong with them. They don't want a woman. Too many women available in the church. Man can close his eyes, grab one, he got a wife. A lot of good women in the church. Not so much good pickings for the women, quite frankly. But uh, good pickings for the men. Uh, you see a man, young man, doesn't even want a wife. Something wrong with him. Y'all hear me? He doesn't want a woman, he wants a man. Y'all hear me? I'm going on record as saying that. I, I, I said this to a sister several years ago. She was uh, dating a young man. He remarried. She told me. And I told her, I said, uh, Billy, you have a long time old to see. 30 some years old. Church boy. Never been married. Been church all his life, never been married. I said, either he's a whore or he's a sissy. I said, but more like he's a sissy. Leave him alone. I'm telling you now. Ain't gonna work. Ain't gonna. She got mad at me. You just want me to be like, all right, fine. They say, get along. Now, I'm not, and I'm not saying that to, to belittle you. I'm just, you know, these are testimonies. When, when, when there are things that you know as a function of being, of, of seniority, of, of time, of experience, you know some things then there are some things that God simply just revealed to you about what's going on. Understand? There are spirits operating in the church that are disturbing. And, and we, we have to sound the alarm. I, I wish, I don't wish for any woman who sits under Pastor Gandhi to take up with a man, any single woman, take up with a man who's in his late 20s, 30s, 40s, and never been married, never, no, don't leave that fellow alone. Leave him alone. Y'all hear me? Leave him alone. You got you got some of the some of the uh, 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 brothers who have never done anything. They never had a good job, nothing. They get married. Not the most handsome fellow in the world. He get married because a bunch of women. Y'all y'all follow me. These things happen in the church, but God is showing. God is he's, there, there's judgment taking place in the church because there's too, there, we have too many women in our churches. Who are being misused in the church. Too many women in the church are being abused. Too many women in the church are being taken advantage of by the pastors, by the preachers, by these traveling evangelists. Too many women being taken advantage of. But God is showing his hand. God's showing his hand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And when the devil comes here, tries, you know, he tries. But we put the Jesus, we put Jesus on the right. And, and watch Jesus put the devil back in check. Come on, what verse are we in? 18. Go ahead. And if the righteous scarcely be saved, where shall the ungodly and the sinner appear? So if, if the righteous are barely saved, then what hope do the sinner and the unrighteous have? If the righteous, if the righteous are scarcely saved, we're just barely saved. All the righteous are fully we're, we're barely, we're barely going to make it. So the poor sinners and the ungodly, you know, they show enough in trouble. That's why we have to be godly examples to the world. We cannot look like the world. We can't talk like the world. We can't walk like the world. We can't act like the world. We can't go where the world goes. We have to come out. They have to see an example that sits above sin. Have to. If you come to church and see the same thing, a church and club, there's no difference. There's no difference. So they may come and join the church, but they're not join the body of Christ. There is no conviction. Conviction. There's no repentance. 
the church has to focus on repentance from of repentance of sins or from sin. Lord, I repent of my sins. We must preach and teach repentance from sin. We don't. We don't. God wants to redeem all of us back to Himself, but we first have to repent. We don't. And the church will not preach and teach repentance. So we have folks who come and join the social club in church. Because I'm on the praise dance team, I'm on the praise team, I'm on this, I'm on that, I'm in usher board, whatever the case may be. They love doing the activities. What about holiness? The church, and they'll turn around and say, the church, the, church, the building ain't church, church ain't you. If the church is in you, I don't want that church. That's a filthy church. The church in you can cuss. The church in you can do whatever you want to do. That's not the church. The church in me constrains me to do what God says. To be holy. And then perchance I get out of his will, the church in me convicts my flesh. Because the flesh war against, or lusts against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. So they're contrary to one to the other. They don't get down like that. You understand? That's why you can't come to God's house and you're, you're always comfortable. No, because the word's going to find you in that unrighteousness because the, the spirit, the flesh, lusts against spirit. Where are you? Verse 19. Go ahead. Wherefore, let them that suffer according to the will of God commit the keeping of their souls to him in well-doing as unto a faithful creator. So, real simple. Okay. Don't worry. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not fear what man shall do unto me. So, I'm not worried about what people say. I'm concerned about what God says. And as long as I do what God says, I'm in good standing. Uh, 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 uh. Matthew chapter 5, Jesus says, Blessed are they which are persecuted, uh, 5 and 10. Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. Now they say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. Not because they expose your mess. See, because when they expose your mess, whether you whether you convince man that you that you're not guilty or not doesn't matter. See, because a lot of folks in church will convince man they're not guilty, but God sees truth. Or oh, you did it, you did it, but you got off. Oh, I didn't. Uh, no, no, they're lying on me. Well, okay, you convince everybody the lie that they, that they're lying on you. They were telling the truth, but you convince everybody that they were lying on you. But guess who knows the truth? Blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceeding glad, for great is your reward in heaven. For so persecuted they the prophets which were before you. They persecute the prophets, they're going to persecute you. Don't worry about it. Take it with a smile. They're going to persecute you. Now, somebody's got to teach the lesson. See, the problem with the church is that, is that the, we, we, at one, there used to be a time where we had the elders teaching. The elders taught. Now we have the young whippersnappers teaching. The elders sit back and being taught by the ones who know nothing. So the church is, is a big blob and know nothing. So we've got to have the elders to reestablish their place. To, to ascend the throne again as the elders. Take your proper position and teach the young folks about God. And so go to, see in 1 Peter chapter 5 verse number 1. The, elder, the elders which are among you I exhort, whom am also an elder and a witness of the sufferings of Christ, and also a partaker of the glory that shall be revealed. Feed the flock of God which is among you, taking the oversight thereof, not by, not by constraint, but willing, not for filthy lucre, but of a ready mind, neither as being lords over God's heritage, but being examples to the flock. And when the chief shepherd shall appear, ye shall receive a crown of glory that fadeth not away. Thank you right there. So now my charge as the pastor is to make sure that my behaviors are consistent with the word of God. So I'm exhorted. Uh, I'm exhorted by Peter through the word of God, by God through the writings of Peter. Feed the flock of God, which is among me. Take me oversight thereof, not by constraint, but willingly. Not for filthy lucre, but of a ready mind. So, I have to be willing to freely feed you. Not because you pay tithes or don't. 
Not because you give an offering or don't. Not because of how much you give or don't give. Not because of what you do or don't. Simply because the truth of God must be spread. The righteousness of God is what sustains the people. And in order for the people to receive it, the elders have to give it to the people. It has to be given. It has to be, you have to feed the flock. The word of God has to be fed to the people. Not because of I'm making you excited. A whole lot of excitement going on, but there's no God in it. So that's a waste of time. So we have to take the word of God. Neither as being lords over them, or over God's heritage, but being examples to the flock. So we don't lord over God's people. I don't want you to worship me, I want you to worship Jesus. We reverence and respect our leadership, no problem. But we don't worship leadership. Understand? We don't lord over leadership. I don't just treat you any old kind of way because I'm the pastor. In fact, because I'm the pastor, God can love you. Isn't that wonderful? See the God we serve. Doesn't let me be a bully with children. Doesn't let me just treat, treat you in your kind of way. Isn't that wonderful? Isn't that wonderful? The Holy Ghost doesn't let me just call you all kinds of demons and devils and, and shut you up and all that stuff. Isn't that great? That's the love of God. We have to, we have to practice that love. And when the chief shepherd shall appear, you shall receive a crown. I'm, I'm, I'm working. I'm living. I'm striving to receive this crown of glory that fadeth not away. So, y'all, I can't stop. I can't stop at all. So, my job is to encourage you. And sometimes, sometimes I have to admonish you. But the bottom line is to maintain Holy Ghost integrity. Our mission has to be to maintain Holy Ghost integrity. So, we are all encouraged to fall in love with the righteousness of God. Be obsessed with pleasing God. Mute all the, the foolishness. Let that stuff go. Let people who don't approve of your lifestyle, that's fine. I don't approve of yours either. So we good. You don't approve of me, I don't approve of you. Isn't that wonderful? I don't approve of sin, you don't approve of righteousness. So what, we don't have a conflict. We're, we're okay. You follow me? But you can't let these folks bother you. Oh, they get on my nerves. I tell you, I'm tired, tired of what? I'm saved. If I'm not being criticized by the world, then there's something wrong. So thank God when they speak evil of you because you're doing what God says. Well, how come you can't, you don't work on Sundays because I don't work on Sundays. I spend my Sundays in church. Well, who do you think you are? Well, who do you think you are? <laughs> I belong to Jesus. But you don't know that because my life is here with Christ and God. Understand? So you don't know me, but I'm not going to let you upset me. I'm not pressed by it because I'm committed to pleasing God and not man. When we get to that place and the world's going to see Christ because they see Christ through us. And I, I don't care what people say, these, these entertainment buildings, these religious moves, these, 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 these uh, social meetings with, that may mention the name of Jesus, maybe, maybe or maybe not. I don't care how excited people are about those things. I'm telling you, no conviction, no God. No conviction, no Holy Ghost. No conviction, no righteousness. So if we're not convicting through the word of God, not through, not through songs, not through you know, the emotion in the church, not through the trickery of the preacher, the tactics and the antics of the preacher, not through all that stuff, get folks emotional, you're crying and carrying on, and you, know, you shed tears, go right outside the church and commit your same sin. Not that, not that right there. But when we take the word of God and we preach and teach the word of God, and you come, you come to see yourself, you see it's a mirror. You see where you mess, oh, I'm on my way to the lake of fire. Now you come with the conviction, but I'm not going. Because I know what the word says. The word tells me, I heard, heard the word. So now I do what? Repent. Be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. So I'm seeing the gift of the Holy Ghost with all the witnesses speaking in tongues. And I'm going to live the evidence of a sanctified life style. Isn't that wonderful? Let's maintain this Holy Ghost integrity, y'all. Let nobody take it away from you. All right. Thank God for his holy word. Amen. Thank you.